Blowing up as an artist is the hardest thing that anyone has to do throughout their career. Sometimes it requires a ton of label money, but most of the time the artists that get the best fan bases are the ones that blow up organically. But normally what this means is that they're really outsmarted everyone. And this is achievable because marketing in itself is as much, if not more of an art form than creating the music. And with that being said, today we're gonna check out five artists who blew up using unique strategies to get there. And if you're a creative who's trying to blow up in your own lane or just someone who's a fan of music related content in general, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and of course follow all the other socials linked in the description if you want daily content about your favorite artists but with that being said let's get into the video uh, 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 uh. the first artist we need to talk about today is comethazine and i know it's probably been a while since you've heard that name but i promise you it is so worthwhile to listen to his name in this video now most recently i've seen that he's trying to make his acting debut but before comethazine was trying to be the next leonardo dicaprio he was out there marketing his music better than anyone i've ever seen if you don't already know him, Comethazine is an artist that originally started to blow up back in 2017, the same way that most artists do. And the way that most artists do is when they try non-stop and something eventually finally works. But I'm not making this video to show you how hard work gets you to the top. I'm making this video to expose the cheat codes that some artists use to get there. But anyways, back to Comethazine. The first thing that really got him a bit of motion was his song Might Cop a Jag that dropped in 2017 on the Elevator YouTube channel. And about a year after dropping Might Cop a Jag, Comethazine dropped a song that he didn't even really believe in called Ben. Now at the time, there was another upcoming popular artist in the same kind of lane as Comethazine blowing up named YBN Namir. And Namir's song Bounce Out With That was starting to take the internet by storm around this time. So much so that there was an upload of his song Bounce Out With That on like a third party SoundCloud account. Not sure if you've ever seen those, but they're kind of these accounts where people host artists' music and try to get them to go viral on SoundCloud. But yes, YBN Namir's song Bounce Out With That was going viral on one of these third party hosting accounts on SoundCloud. And being an artist in the same scene, Comethazine Comethazine and his team saw an opportunity with this, and they actually paid the SoundCloud page that hosted Namir's Bounce Out With That to swap the song file and change the name and cover. So the upload still kept the same number of streams and the same kind of motion in the algorithm, but it was a completely different song than what was originally uploaded. So again, for reference, started as YBN Namir's Bounce Out With That, got changed to Comethazine's song Bands. And because of all the traction the algorithm was giving to the upload as Bounce Out With That, when Comethazine switched that song to his song Bands, he ended up getting the number one song on SoundCloud. And that really is the song that blew him up. Later on, he even got a lyrical lemonade video to it. So in my opinion, this is the tactic that solidified him as a mainstream artist. And in my opinion, it is brilliant. And it kind of reminds me of the Soulja Boy blow up because Soulja Boy would upload his music to a website called LimeWire where people would illegally download music back in the early 2000s. But much like Comethazine, he did a little finesse. Soulja Boy would upload his song, but under a completely different name, normally out of something that was on the Billboard Hot 100. So for example, he'd upload Crank At under the name 50 Cent in the club. And listeners would download the song thinking they're about to listen to the 50 Cent classic, but then be surprised to hear Soulja Boy. But Soulja Boy had an even smarter method when it came to blowing up later on in his career, so watch this video all the way through if you want to know what that was. Now, despite being one of the more controversial artists nowadays, Lil Nas X is one of the biggest marketing geniuses when it comes to music, even though his methods today to stay hot are kind of rubbing people the wrong way. We all know that Lil Nas X originally blew up from his breakout viral song, Old Town Road. And there are a million different factors as to why the song Old Town Road actually blew up the way it did. For example, TikTok was new and hot at the time, and there was also a controversy involving him in the country billboard charts. There was just like a bunch of different factors, so I can't really pinpoint one specific one and credit the blow up to that. But I can say that one of the biggest contributors to this blow up was that Lil Nas X was already a social media genius. Because before Lil Nas X was in fact Lil Nas X, the guy with the song Old Town Road, he already had a pretty big social media following. And this is because Lil Nas X ran a Nicki Minaj fan page on Twitter called Nas Mirage. Now he's been accused of using some growth tactics for that account that were pretty unethical, but he managed to grow that Twitter account to over 148,000 followers before it was suspended. And again, I reiterate, because there were so many different factors, I can't tell you for certain that this was the reason why Old Town Road blew up, but having the ability to tweet out your song to over 100,000 people that follow an account simply for its taste in music definitely helps. So before all the genius marketing strategies we see nowadays from Lil Nas X, just remember that marketing strategy number one was to create a Twitter fan page. <laughs> The next artist we need to look at who had a unique strategy and approach to his blow up is Eam Triplin. This guy has been taking over everyone's feeds over the last few years with viral clips of him at Rolling Loud, to him literally roasting his fans in public. I go by the name Eam Triplin, I know most y'all don't know me. 
Hey, I do know you. Don't know me after I this, do man. know you. Give me a shout out. Give you a shout out? Yeah. What's your name, cousin? Me? Uh, okay. Uh, I forgot his name. What the fuck? But the way that he magically appeared was very calculated from what I can see. For those of you that don't know, Eam Triplin actually started off as a YouTube producer, constantly putting out tight beats on his channel, pulling in some solid views, and even getting in credits with some big artists. He ended up locking in some solid production credits with guys like Snot and DC the Don, but in the back of his mind, he kind of wanted to be an artist too. And there were a few key elements that this guy used in his artist blow up, but there was one underlying reason as to why it worked. Some of those elements were building an audience on YouTube as a producer and kind of getting his own community like that getting on the algorithm's good side with consistent uploads on the platform, and of course, marketing unique pieces of content. But the main thing that Eam Triplin used towards his blow up was the narrative itself. The idea that Snot's old producer could go from producing multiple beats a day in his room and uploading them to YouTube to making songs with Lil Yachty and headlining his own tours is an underdog story. And everyone loves to root for the underdog, so if you market your underdog story, you'll probably end up gaining some fans. Now these next two artists are kind of bonus artists for this video because we're not going to talk about their original blow up, we're going to talk about how they blew up even further than they already originally did. Like after they were already established, they had second blow ups by using unique marketing strategies. The first of these artists is Lil Dicky, who originally blew up in 2013 with his comedic take on rap music with songs like Ex Boyfriend, Sports, and Professional Rapper. But in 2024, Lil Dicky is having his second blow up in my opinion. And this is because Lil Dicky's last song before 2024 was the song Earth that he dropped back in 2019. And in 2019, when it seemed like Lil Dicky was hitting the heights of his career with his biggest songs dropping, and features with everyone from Chris Brown to Justin Bieber to Ariana Grande on one fucking song, he decided he would take a break from music. And not even a year later in 2020, he announced he would be dropping his TV show about his life called Dave. That show ended up developing a fan base outside of those who already knew Lil Dicky because of his music and became a hit show pretty quickly. And in three seasons where he snippeted a song in almost every episode, he did not drop one song. Until 2024, when he dropped the album like last week and he made the show plot intertwine with the album itself this in my opinion was genius because he had the ability to get the attention of the old fans because you know he hasn't dropped in a while and now he's dropping but he also was able to get the interest of those who are fans of the show because it directly contributes to the narrative and plot of the show if you listen to the album plus he gave the people watching the show something to be excited about if you heard a snippet that you couldn't get out of your head now you can listen to it on his album very solid way to convert fans of the show into fans of the music in my opinion And then the last artist we have here is of course Soulja Boy. Because Soulja Boy was the first artist ever to market his music. What? Frank Sinatra, what? the Beatles, Soulja Boy did it first. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Now Soulja Boy has always been a genius marketer when it comes to his music and using the internet. But the reason why I'm including Soulja Boy in this video is because his biggest song literally did all the marketing for his future music to come. We all know the legendary phone number from Soulja Boy's hit song, Kiss Me Through the Phone. He said I can't and that song dropped in 2008, which means I was eight years old when it released. And when me and the rest of the children in the world heard that part of the song, you already know what we did. We ran to our phones and we dialed that number right away, whether it was a call or a text message. And we were hoping that Big Draco would be on the other line. But what we didn't know is that everyone who called or texted that number ended up getting added to a subscription list that allowed Soldier Boy to send out notifications to your number. Which means that whenever Soldier Boy dropped new music or released merch or announced a tour, he was directly able to access everybody who called or texted that number. And let me just put it into perspective numbers wise. That song has over 600 million streams on Spotify alone, which means if only 1% of the people who listened to that song on Spotify called or texted that number, he would still have 6 million people receiving direct notifications about his music, merch, tours, etc. I personally unsubscribed when he dropped the Soldier Boy gaming console, but I'm sure some people stuck around. And Soldier Boy is an absolute legend for that one. But anyways, those are the top five most unique marketing strategies in my opinion. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow all the links in the description if you want daily hip-hop content. And always remember that if someone's bullying you, just tell them to show you their bank account. See you next week.